What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another great edition of No Love Philly, the podcast dedicated to artists, activists, musicians, comedians, breweries, basically anybody who makes the city of brotherly love and its surrounding area as awesome as it is. Uh, Today, we catch up with Kate from Downtrotter. Um, We discuss a lot of different things. Uh, We discuss uh, some of the motivation or inspiration behind uh, the lyrics to her songs, kind of uh, what her intent is with that band, uh, what, what, what she hopes to achieve with it. Uh, we talk about their their LP. Uh, we talk about different festivals. Um, we, we talk a lot about a lot of good stuff. Um, so this it's going to be an awesome interview. You can check them out on Facebook. Uh, I believe they have a band camp. Um, I want to go ahead and get into some show listings tonight. You ha- June fifteenth. You have Slinko and McKees playing on Thursday, June fifteenth at Sweeney Saloon. You have Tapes and Tubes by Austin Potter playing Sunday, June twenty fifth at Bourbon and Branch. Um, let's see here, that one's already passed. And then you've got uh, oh, Tectonic just uh, I think they're just releasing a new um, a new album, so you might want to look out for that. Uh, Downtrotter Sister Munch NYC June twenty second, so you want to make sure that that's out. Um, see here this is that's already passed what else do we have here uh that's already passed uh oh june 16th a band from michigan outside plays at pharmacy june 16th um so that's tomorrow and then there was a dude i feel bad man because people message me but i I don't uh, i don't get to keep all of them i it's hard for me to, to go back through each one of them to find who said what and how long ago it was I need to do something to create. I created a show listing on the Facebook page, so you can submit there, um, and hopefully it'll be able to. I'll, I'll be able to get more. Um, I'll be able to get it done quicker. Be able to find your post sooner. Be able to announce it. I need to just go ahead and start creating a list every week. Um, all right, so that's it. So I'm going to catch you guys up with uh, Kate from Downtrotter. It's a really good interview. I was really glad to get them on. I can't wait to catch them live. Uh, you can find some of their live performances on on um, on uh, you know, some of their videos. Uh, on their Facebook page. Uh, Really cool. Uh, Kate was really cool. I really enjoyed getting to speak with her. And uh, I hope you guys enjoy the interview. If you, uh, oh, like our Facebook, our Instagram, our YouTube, um, Patreon I have set up. I don't really have too much going on with that. But if you guys have ideas, let me know. Um, But yeah, here she is, Kate from Downtrotter. Enjoy it. Talk to you all later. This awesome conversation. Let's start off with the name and, and where you're from and what am I doing in this apartment? And <laughs> um, my name is Kate. I am the vocalist for Downtrotter. We're a Philly-based uh, post-hardcore band um, that focuses on politics. Um, I am a Philly transplant. I grew up in the Poconos, and then I lived in Westchester when I went to college, and then I lived all over New Jersey for like seven or eight years, and then I moved to Philly partially because of the music scene. So what do you think has spawned that those constant transitions in your life going from place mm. to place and being a wanderer and a roamer? I don't know. Maybe that's something to talk to my therapist about. <laughs> um, I have never wanted to be tied down. Um, you know, my mom is awesome. She's a um, she has a doctorate in mathematics and she is now the uh head of the math department at East Stroudsburg University, which I'm super proud about. Um, And she's been doing uh, either teaching math or working at that school her whole life. And I was like, wow, that's really cool, but I don't think that's for me. Um, And I've always kind of felt that way that I never wanted to settle down in one spot and stay there forever and get a job and keep working that job for years and years and years and years. And so that's kind of moved me around a little bit. But also, Playing music has moved me around from place to place. Being uh, based, being in different bands that are based in different parts of New Jersey is partially why I moved around. Um, and so just going to where was convenient and also where I could afford to live is especially in New Jersey is like a huge thing. Um, you know, I had tried to move to New Brunswick uh, before we moved here and New Brunswick has an amazing basement scene, amazing DIY scene. Um, and one of my old bands is actually based out of New Brunswick. Um, but I just couldn't find anything that was affordable. And that is a big issue in New Jersey in general. The taxes out there are crazy. Yeah. Like insane. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And when you're renting, uh, that burden gets passed down to you. The landlord doesn't pick that up. That becomes, you know, they just split it up between all of their apartments and you're picking up their taxes, basically. So when you're looking at, like, you know, a studio apartment somewhere like New Brunswick that's also a college town, you're talking 
nine hundred for a very small studio, uh, which when you have two cats and a partner is just not possible. Right. It's it's not enough space. So, so so through that through that traveling and that roaming around, um, you you eventually found your place here or around. But like, how did you find how did you found find your bandmates in Downtrotter? Um. Dave has been a friend of mine. Our guitarist Dave has been a friend of mine for a while. He um, was in another band or is in another band with um, some friends of mine that I've been friends with for 10 years at this point. I had posted on uh, Facebook saying, hey, I want to start uh, a punk band. I want to be the vocalist. I'm looking for other people. Um, I very specifically want to raise money for charities. And I want to talk about political things that are on my mind as well as talk about experience, very personal experiences in my life. Um, and Dave was one of the first people to respond. And um, he kind of took a lot of it from there. He suggested our drummer, Brad, who is also a friend of mine who I knew through one of my old bands. Um, and he also found Amber, our bass player, um, you know, posting posting on his own wall and saying like, hey, we really want, we need a bass player and we'd really like to find somebody who's, um, you know, not like a white cis male, uh, just basically for my personal comfort because I always like to play music if, you know, with at least one other woman in the group um, just because it's more fun for me, basically. That's cool. Yeah. So, um, so how did so I've heard I've heard it. So I haven't got to see you guys live, but I've seen okay. I've seen videos, right? <laughs> and uh, I dig it, man. Thank like, you. Um, it it's like it's super fucking grungy. Is that is that offensive? I don't mean to no. do that. Like it's no, fucking, not at all. It's super like it's super fucking gutter, and it's so raw. It's so like it's it's a. It's a we don't give a fuck type uh, band, and it's it, seriously, it's like that. It, that is a live show that I want to see. It's a live show that I want to see in a bar with a beer, with good friends, and fucking like, yeah, let's fucking check this out. So, wh- Thank so you. what? Did you say that you're political. What are some of the issues that you all cover? Um, or that you cover as you're the vocalist, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, so our demo, um, our demo was four songs. Two of the songs were about um, a past abusive relationship that I had, just kind of uh, getting a lot of shit off of my chest regarding that. Um, one of the other songs uh, on there is uh, about people who um, are fake Christians and use. Uh, the Bible and the words of Christ as a way to hurt other people, but specifically as a way to uh, enrage people to get them to carry out horrific acts against places like Planned Parenthood and abortion clinics. Um, you know, the kind of the people like the people who uh, who made that ev- severely edited video about how Planned Parenthood, quote unquote, sells baby parts um, and how basically by yelling these things and saying you know presenting this false information and backing it up with a skewed version of what christ actually said in the bible how they basically have incited violence against people who are simply seeking medical services um some of our newer songs stuff we talk about um obviously the election and the effect that it has on the country um One of our songs is about uh, the commodification of body positivity and um, also uh, using advertising to uh, tell women that they're beautiful and they'll be even more beautiful if they buy this product instead of it being, hey, you know, you need to fix this problem area. Now it's like, girl, you look great. Why don't you try Dove soap? You'll look even better. And it's like, this is really gross and it's really upsetting to me and it's always very targeted towards like specific groups like there will be a a dove ad that's specifically aimed at black women who have uh textured hair and how they need to use this product to make themselves look better they already look great but you'll look even better if you do this or they'll be aimed at a you know, they'll be like this great positive commercial and then the next commercial they'll tell you that you need to have beautiful armpits and it's like, fuck off. No, I don't need to have beautiful armpits. I need to have armpits that don't like knock somebody out when I lift my arm. Those are my requirements for armpits, basically. 
So one, I've interviewed Philly Jesus. <laughs> Two, you have a very strong uh, uh, commercial voice. Like I for sure. Thank you. <laughs> I work in customer service, and I also um, I have been working in customer service for most of my adult life, and I also work on the phone. So everyone who works in customer service has like a customer service voice <laughs> that they use, and it doesn't surprise me that it comes out occasionally. Sometimes I'll do sound checks with my customer service voice just to make my bandmates laugh because it's so funny. It's completely different than my normal speaking voice i know exactly what you're talking about because i did telemarketing for three years oh yeah and so like it would always be like beep dish no thank you for calling share shane speaking i'm gonna help you you know what i mean yeah so, it's um, completely different you, like customer service is basically acting because right. you're pretending you give a shit about what this person is telling you and you you have you know you you know hi this is kate i'm calling from so-and-so <laughs> company it, and that's um it. calling you about uh your your account it seems that you have an overdue video it was due back yesterday just to let you know our policy is seven days so <laughs> it's it's renewed and you need to return it next tuesday oh, or it'll charge God. you for another week if you have any questions give us a call back and that's the voice and i do that voice for 40 hours a week it's without even thinking about it and i can just immediately turn it on and off it's so funny to me to hear you say that and then to hear you like on youtube singing like it's just such, yes it is such a fucking contradiction man it makes I, no sense absolutely well i mean i have to let it out Somehow, because there are so many things I want to say to people on the phone that I absolutely just have to hold into myself. And then I kind of let some of them out on stage and make jokes about it. So you were talking about so you were talking about your first uh, it was a four song LP, right? EP, mm -hmm. EP is what it would be, right? Mm -hmm. um, so uh, where did where was that recorded? Uh, we recorded in uh, New Brunswick th with our friend uh, Mark Cretelli. He has a uh, home studio. And uh, it was really easy. It was really quick. Uh, Mark's a great guy. Um, and that was basically it. We went in. We knocked it out in two days. Um, we had a whole bunch of uh, friends of ours come in and do some gang vocals with us. I posted on Facebook, any ladies, any femmes want to come over and yell some angry words with us? come on by and I think we had something like 12 of our friends come in and do gang vocals which was, was all women and all femme uh, gang vocals which is really exciting for me because pretty much anytime I've done gang vocals with a band it's been like me and maybe one other lady and then like 10 dudes so it was really cool for me um, to bring them into that process and, and to let them be part of something that we were doing and I know for a lot of them it was like really exciting so it was cool it was really fun. So does what, well number one you have a vape here can I vape in here oh go ahead okay, go great. for it go all right for so it. then two is that um uh t t tell me what gang vocals are explain that to me. um basically uh, when you get to points in the song that are really important and you really want to emphasize it you'll call in anywhere from three to in our case twelve people and uh, have them stand around a mic and yell them all at once so um like if you listen to our EP the very end of the song Kill Switch. Um, we just had everybody come and stand around a mic and yell all the words with me. So it's like a sing along. Basically, That's what you're yeah. talking about. Yeah, yeah okay, basically. Got you, got you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mumford and Sons done it or whatever. I mean, I'm, it's on a hundred thousand songs, but I, I get yeah. it. Yeah, I totally know what you mean. That's awesome, man. So, uh, so you you got a you you got a bunch of uh, ladies that get ch channel into their um, inner beast and let that shit out. Then, yes. Huh? All right, that's cool, yes, man. Yes, it was really cool. It was really so fun. with that recording process. Did you guys? Did you? Did you take it all seriously? Like, no, it has to be mastered exactly perfect. Or were you like, no, no, we're going to fucking let's get this shit down and let's make it get it out. Or what, what was your you said you did it in two days. Well, so. we recorded it all in two days. Got you. Um, and then uh, Mark mixed it after that. And then we did send it out for mastering. I'm blanking on the name of the company that did our mastering. Um, but we wanted it to sound, you know, as good as it can. Um, you know, we didn't. I wouldn't say that we were total perfectionists about it and we didn't go back over things a hundred times. Um, but I think we put in amount of the, a good amount of time for what we were putting out. And I was really, really happy with what we put out as well. I mean, I think it sounds, it, it sounds great. It's Thank just, you. Uh, I, yeah, I was just wondering like, um, with his, uh, I don't know. How, I don't. I, it's not meant to be offensive when I say, but as grungy as it is, you kind of like want that like muddy right. sound. You know what I mean? You don't want a it little to be bit, yeah. over. Um, oh, I don't want it to sound. I don't want it to sound polished. There you go. Is That's the what I'm word to say. that yeah, I'm looking yeah, for. Exactly yeah, right. I've yeah. I've had I've been in bands in the past where um, 
we recorded songs and we sent them to someone for mastering and they came back. I can't even think of another word other than glossy. Um, you know, there was like a glockenspiel on the track and the track was very, um, like the, the glockenspiel was up very high, like bells were up very high and it sounded very, very poppy and it sounded like it could be on the radio. What the fuck is glockenspiel? It's bells. I actually right. have one here somewhere, but okay. it's like the metal bells, the very like very metallic like okay, ping kind of bells, yeah. Right. And that was just that was up very loud and the way it was mastered it sounded like it could be um on on the radio and it wasn't necessarily what I would have done with it, but you know, it worked for the music, but I wouldn't want Downtrotter to sound uh glossy or polished so much as together. So there's so many good um, um, punk acts, and, and there's so many. There, well, first of all, there's so many bands that come through here, right? And they're playing venues left and right, and things like that. My question is: would, Is it difficult for you, as downtrotter, to be able to jump on one of those bills and open for like a national punk band? Or is that is that a has it been tried? Um, we haven't really gone for it, honestly. Um, I have been uh, burned in the past by people who said, hey, if you sell tickets for this show, you'll get to open for this national headliner. Uh, one of my first bands, we sold a lot of tickets to open for a national headliner that would have done us a lot of good. And we showed up to the show and they were like, sorry, the touring band brought an extra opener, so you're not playing. Dick. Yeah, so and we were just completely shit out of luck our uh, our trombone player had actually taken a bus back from pittsburgh to allentown pa so that he could play the show because we were opening for one of his favorite bands and showed up and then just had to get back on the bus and go home and he said it was like one of the saddest bus rides he's ever been on so i'm always very wary to play those kinds of things um i also don't really like to have to sell tickets um it's it is a lot of work and it's a lot of effort um I would rather, if I'm going to be spending time on my band, I would rather be spending that time writing lyrics or rehearsing or talking about what we want to do in the future or looking into tour routes, things like that. Um, you know, opening for big bands is definitely cool, but when it, it when there's an aspect of selling tickets involved, I am I'm always very very wary. So, do you guys do you guys play a lot? I mean, you have members in Jersey and stuff like that. Do you mm -hmm. guys play a lot of out of town shows? How what, how often are you guys doing that? I would say we're mostly in Philly. We play a lot of basement shows, a lot of house shows, um, and especially after being in a New Brunswick band for five and a half years, um, those places kind of feel like home to me. Um, but we've done a couple shows. Uh, you know, we did a show up in, um, heck, we did a show up in Phillipsburg. We've done um, a couple shows, a show in New Brunswick. We played the Meat Locker up in Montclair uh, a while ago. Um, and we played up in uh, Boston over the winter, which was a mistake to go to Boston. Boston was amazing, but it was a mistake to go there in winter because I have not been that cold in a really long time, and I was definitely not prepared for how cold it was going to so be. So it's much different than Philly, the Boston cold? It was, it's, it's biting. Okay. And there's much more of a wind chill, too. But, I mean, like, we played Boston, and I think it was, like, February, you know. And I grew up in the Poconos, too. And, I mean, it gets cold up there. But I think it was more like I wasn't thinking, like, oh, yeah, I'm going to Boston in February. It's going to be cold. Like, that just didn't cross my mind. Like, last year I went on a tour in April, and we went out to the Midwest, and it did not occur to me how cold the Midwest was going to be at the begin at the end of March and beginning of April, and I really regretted not bringing like an extra hoodie with me. So we don't really play. Uh, we haven't really had a chance to play out of town all that much. Uh, we are doing a couple out of town shows at the end of the month. We are going to be in um, D.C., uh, Huntington, Maryland, and I should have looked at this before the interview. Ah, dude, we'll find it on Facebook. Yeah, it's we're playing we're playing Philly, D.C., uh, Huntington, Maryland, and Richmond, Virginia, um, the twenty third. 22nd, 23rd, 24th, and 25th um, with a band called Sister Munch from New York City that we had played. Funny in. name, by the way. Yeah, Sister it's amazing. The, the <laughs> band is just as good as the name. Please <laughs> check them out. Everybody who's listening, please check out Sister Munch. Um, we had played a show with them up in New York City, and they contacted us about playing a show in Philly, and we said, hey, we were actually thinking about going out on the same around the same time. Let's do a couple dates together. And so we're doing like a nice little weekender with them, which is going to be really fun. I'm definitely looking forward to so it. So are those basement shows or are those venues? Uh, I think... 
I think they're all venues except for the Philly show is a basement. So ask a punk. <laughs> Got you. Yeah. <laughs> Find the local punk in your area. Exactly. Right? They're tell you what the fuck it is. Exactly. So is it is it is it difficult trying to uh, set those things up, man, to set up those uh, those weekend tours and, and do things like that? Um, the weekend tours haven't been so bad. Um, going out with one or two other bands, um, it can be like a it can either hurt you or it can help you with shorter run stuff like this. We are just doing like a weekend. I think it has definitely been helpful to us. Uh, when we went up to Boston, it was the same kind of thing where we did like a little weekender. We did a weekender with, um, lung lust from Boston and fluoride from new Brunswick. And what we did is each band set up a show in their town. So we set up the Philly show fluoride, set up the new Brunswick show and lung lust set up and set up the Boston show. And because we had one solid band in each city, we had a pretty good turnout of the show's turn out pretty well and everybody had a good time um and i think that sister munch is kind of going to be the same thing where we are working together i know we're working together to to find these shows and i think that um that that'll be a good thing for us um but setting up actually setting up stuff in philly can be kind of difficult sometimes just because of the amount of stuff that's going on and um also having a lot of friends in bands and a lot of friends who are promoters and not wanting to step on anybody's toes you know if you know that so and so is setting up a show on july 27th i'm not going to set up a show on july 27th because i want their show to succeed and i think that's where a lot of uh difficulties honestly for us come in is just making sure that we're able to go out and support other bands and also not stepping on anybody's toes and booking on days that are art you know that already have like a good hardcore show going or a good punk show going and trying to get more people to go to that good you know that one good show rather than splitting people up between two different ones so oh, th that's a, that's an awesome philosophy i mean it's yeah. got to burn to be like uh I fucking mean, a we can play it but yeah, so but I, get I mean, it. that's a it's, sacrifice. But it's 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 thinking about the community as a whole. I mean, if you just go through it in this single-minded thing of we're downtrodder and we're gonna play shows, um, I really feel like you're not doing the community any help at whatsoever. And I also think that that can definitely come back to bite you in the ass later on. Um, but there's if you have more of like a community view of what's going on in your town and what's going on in in your city, I think that you're going to have better shows as opposed to just thinking we're downtrodder and we're going to do this. If you're thinking, hey, if I put this show on this date and I know there's already another show on that date, am I really helping anybody besides myself? So that's something that we've tried to be aware of, especially with, um, you know, a lot of the bigger fests that have been going on in Philly, like, um, uh, you know, we played Electra Fest and there have been other fests that have been going on and making sure that we're putting our time and energy into those things and supporting them rather than pulling energy away from them. So do you, I want to get on a fest so bad. Like what yeah. I want to do, my, my, one of my biggest goals with this thing is to be able to kind of sponsor a fest in the, in the sense that uh, I, I would run every uh, pre-roll ads, every single fucking podcast uh, leading up to the event, but just to let me have a booth there, man, and let me uh, interview folks and, and do things. In fact, um, I thought about you guys when I heard about that there's a hardcore fest that goes down in Philly, man. It's oh, this is hardcore? Yeah, yeah, dude. Yeah, we will not be playing that. <laughs> Why not? What? Like oh, man, I don't want to go into it, but... Uh, it's 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 not my favorite thing, but I understand why other people like it. Um, I want to fucking check that shit out. Go for yeah, it. Dude. Go for it. Um, there's this uh, done deal. Have you ever heard of those dudes? No. Where are they from? Fucking a. They're from here, man. They're fucking done deal, pal. It's it's, it's fucking they got like a 60 second uh, song on Instagram. Um, and it's just fucking it's just killer, man. Uh, the, I know that the dudes from um no slam dance the no slam dance book um have you have you read that no i've heard of it i've heard of it, I'm, Is fucking, it I'm trying to i'm trying to wrangle a copy right now um but uh i know that this dude uh posted it up and uh, the author of that book posted it up and um and then i checked him out like holy shit these dudes are from philly and, and it's fucking it's brutal it reminds me of uh the the, the front man reminds me of carrie king a little bit and uh um, but it's fucking heavy, dude. And like, I've been looking and searching like for that heavy shit here. In right. Philly, you know right. I mean? The more like beat down kind of stuff. Fuck yeah, dude. Yeah. Give it to me. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. I'm not it. tough enough for beat down. <laughs> I've, I only seem tough. I'm actually like, I go home from a show and like, you know, get high and watch Steven universe and like cry. <laughs> like I only come across tough because I like 
you know, make mean jokes sometimes and wave my hair around and yell a lot. But uh, I'm actually like a huge softie at heart. So So that's not your fest. then. Um, are, are there similar ones? I mean, are there, are there other like that, that are fests that I'm into? Yeah. Um. Well, as far something that's going to be like geared towards this fucking grimy like. Yeah. I don't know the necessary gr- geared toward grimy. As far as fests that I go to, um, this year is going to be the third year that I'm going to the fest in Gainesville. Uh, it happens at the end of October. Um, it's uh, every anything from you know punk to hardcore to some indie stuff to some ska, um, and it's a really good time. Basically, uh, it takes place in Gainesville and. Uh, The town basically empties out that weekend because everybody goes up to the football game in Alabama, I believe it is, because that's like their big rivalry game. So the whole town empties out and then it just fills up with punks from all over the country, from Australia, from the UK, like from, you know, a bunch of different countries and stuff. Um, all of there's a, a big outdoor stage and then there's also a bunch of inside venues of varying sizes. Um, and basically it is, um, it's a lot of fun. Uh, it takes place, uh, Friday, Saturday and Sunday at the end of October. I have made so many friends, um, going to fest people that I've stay in touch with and have become very, very close to me. Um, I've seen, you know, bands that I love from all over the country. Uh, last year I got to see the Ergs reunite, which was like huge for me. They were one of the first, um, you know, like org core bands or, you know, you know, pop punk bands that I really loved. Um, but I also get to see bands like Gouge Away and Night Witch, like Florida hardcore bands that maybe they'll come through Philly once a year and then I won't have another opportunity to see them. Or, um, you know, bands from California that will never make it out to Philly just because the cost of touring across the country is so great. But they can get together the money to fly down to Fest and play a show at Fest and then I get to see them. And that's really exciting for me. And also there's... Um, there's a great positivity about the fest that I really love um, where everybody there is kind of looking out for one another. You know, no, nobody really thinks of their fun as being the most important fun and puts others at risk so that they could have fun. A lot of, you know, a lot of people there are hell bent on taking care of you. You know, if you fall down in the pit, there's 10 hands helping you up right away. A perfect example of this Um, you know, last year I was driving down with the guys in, uh, the band Cold Rex from Brooklyn. They had picked me up and we had a blowout on the side of 95, uh, in North Carolina. So we posted in a group that's dedicated, you know, to people who, for people who go to the fest and said, Hey, we're stuck on the side of 95. Can anybody help us out? And immediately, you know, like 15 minutes later, a car full of people going down to fest pulls over and says, Hey, we don't have any room in our car, but do you guys need to go to the bathroom? Would you like us to take you to go get some food? Like, how can we help you out? And we're like, no, we're good for right now, but thanks for stopping. Five minutes later, another car pulls over, and it's this, and keep in mind, these are people we've never met before. We don't know them. Another guy pulls over and says, uh, hey, I heard you guys are having trouble because of the Facebook group. Uh, what can I do to help you out? And that guy ended up uh, driving a half hour, actually a full hour out of his way, half an hour there and half an hour back to take two of us to go rent a car so that we could make it down to the fest and then our other two friends stayed with the car while it was being fixed and so that's just a perfect example of uh the kindness that people are trying to extend to each other and make sure that everybody has a good positive time and that means a lot to me as just uh you know someone who wants everybody I'm, I'm I care about other people and I care about that they're having a good time so for me it was just kind of like walking into this beautiful situation and I'm so glad that I get to be a part of it now so that's that's really my fest I think a lot of people do have kind of their fest I know a lot of people like riot fest is their fest or punk rock bowling that's their fest that that's kind of my fest that's the one I love to go to every time um but uh this past year we did play um Electrofest, uh, which was at the Rotunda a couple months ago, um, and it was a fundraiser um, for uh, 
Morris Home, which is a uh, LGBTQ youth center and and shelter. And uh, that was really fun. It was really cool to be part of. I was super diverse as far as uh, uh, the different uh, genres of music being played. So I got to see a bunch of bands that I probably may not have seen otherwise. And we got to raise money for a service that's really, really needed. So between the two of them, I was just like, yeah, this is amazing. And I really hope it happens again next year. And I hope it's uh, I hope it's bigger and we can be more involved. That's awesome, man. So would, when you go to these fests, you're going as a fan. You're not going as a uh, <laughs> as th- you're not performing. Um, it's kind of half and half. Um, you know, Electrofest we played uh, the first year that I went to fest. Actually, the reason I got to go, one of the cool things that the fest does is they have a lot of bands that will do full cover sets, you know, not just one song, but they'll ha- they'll have, you know, a band will cover um, you know, last year I saw my friends in Jabber do a, an entire set that was all Spice Girls covers, or you'll have a band, um, you know, the band that I was with for the first year I went to Fest, they did an Against All Authority set, and they needed horn players, and I, I happened to be heard, a trumpet player. I haven't heard Against All Authority in so long. I'm yeah. embarrassed to say how long that's been. I, I, well, people were psyched, you know, because they haven't played in a really, really long time. They, you know, and they were huge for a long time. Um, but they had, you know, friends of mine who are in this band called Station Cases. They said, we're going to do an Against All Authority cover set. Who wants to play horns? And I said, pick me. I want to play horns. Um, so I did actually play that year, but it was, it was part of a cover set. But it was still really cool um, to participate in this, in, in, in the fest and, uh, and get to be part of it. And plus it was really cool uh too because it uh kind of made it affordable for me um to go to a fest down in florida and you know to pay the 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 ticket price it can be kind of difficult for uh you know working class people or musicians who like i tend to use whatever spare money i have is for touring or it's for putting music out and so it made it a little bit more um accessible for me and i'm hoping uh that hopefully you know we can continue to put on fests and try to make them as accessible for people as possible. So what do you want for Downtrotter? Like, what is your, what is your end goal for that? What That's such a big like? question. It is. Um, but for me, uh, there's a bunch of different things I want to get out of Downtrotter. Uh, the first thing, you know, obviously for me was getting a lot of stuff off of my chest about things that were really personal personal to me and affecting me. And I knew that there were other people out there that were going through those things or had been through those things. Uh, you know, the my past abusive relationship being a really big one of them. Um, I know a lot of people who have been through that situation and... Um, I wanted to kind of put out some music that said, hey, me too, and it sucks, and I'm sorry that happened to you, but I believe you, and I want you to get better, and I want you to get help, and I don't want that ever happen to you again, and if you ever need somebody, come talk to me, and that was a big part of why I wanted to start it in the first place, Um, but I, you know, another reason for starting it, like I said before, is I wanted to, um, you know, raise money for different charities and give to different causes um i love music i love playing music i've been doing it for you know over three quarters of my life at this point and um a lot of times music can feel kind of selfish um you are kind of telling people to sit down and listen to your important thoughts and i wanted to kind of give something back and also to know you know a lot of times you have a skill and you you really like doing that thing, but it doesn't necessarily give anything back to other people. So that was something that I really wanted to do. And we've done a lot of that. And I'm, I'm really proud of how much money that we've been able to raise for places like the Morris Home or, uh, you know, Planned Parenthood, um, the ACLU, stuff like that, um, especially after the election happened and everything. That's been a big focus for us. Um, but also, you know, going on tour, having fun. Um, you know, one of the things I really love about Downtrotter is that we're all friends, um, and we have a great time together. And I think that's always been really important for me in bands too, is to, uh, be in bands with people who like you and support you. And, you know, you don't just walk in and practice with them and then leave. Um, you know, you try to make time to spend time with one another. And honestly, that's, um, been hard for me for other bands that I've been in. Um, you know, I recently left my old bands and it's been so hard to, um, spend time with them and it like pains me because these people are like some of my closest friends but 
they're up in New Brunswick and sometimes it's hard to fi- it's hard to find the time, you know. Um, so, you know, and and also just playing music and yelling, you know, waving my hair around. Like I said, I really enjoy that. <laughs> so. All right. So let, let's talk about Kate for just a second. You oh, said, no. You said uh, you said that, you know, you you're not one for settling down. And, and uh, but what I mean, it, what what is your plan? What would you like to do? I mean, you could do anything. You didn't have to worry about money. You didn't have to worry about anything. What would it, what would it be like? What is oh, your, wow. what's your goal, man? What do you want to do? If I didn't have to worry about money, I would buy a boat like a uh, 19th century sailing boat and leave forever. Um, not really forever, but, um, like a fucking pirate. I thought about it for a long time. I actually thought about buying a, ho- a houseboat for a while and just being like, whatever. Um, but, I don't really have a lot of concrete plans in my future. <laughs> um, it's it's tough for me because I'm not a planner at all. I don't plan things. I just kind of end up places. Um, but um, I would like to be a good person. That's my biggest plan for the future is trying to take care of other people and uh, and and help out in ways that I can. I really don't have solid plans beyond that. I mean, I'm moving soon, but I'm just... Uh, out yeah. of Philly or... Um, probably just over the bridge. Uh, my partner goes to school, uh, at Burlington Community College and tuition's cheaper when you live in New Jersey. So we might do that because, uh, just school loans are ridiculous. And if, even if it's only $50 a credit now, once that goes into your school loans and it starts accruing interest, that's not $50 anymore. Next n- month, it's $51.25. And the month right. after that, it's $53.75. So that's really, uh, that's my big plan. That and maybe finding a job I like more, but Eh. That's it, huh? Yeah, like whatever. I'm not good at planning right. whatsoever. My bandmates will uh, tell you that I'm bad at using a calendar. Um, I still haven't figured out how to sync my calendar to our email. Um, so that gives you, and you know, there's like a dry erase calendar in there. There's one on my phone. Sometimes I write things on my hand. I use Facebook events, and I still can't keep track of what I'm trying to do. So trying to plan for the future is like. Uh, uh, yeah, exactly. I'm going to work tomorrow. <laughs> I know that. <laughs> Unfortunately, I'm going to work tomorrow. <laughs> well, that's that's got to be somewhat liberating in a way. Like, yeah, like, I don't, you know, yeah. whatever's whatever. It frustrates the hell out of my partner because he's always trying to make plans, and I'm like, well, you know, we could talk about this later. Let's watch Brooklyn Nine Nine. <laughs> you know, stuff like that. I'm, I'm I, I put things off a lot, and it's not a good thing. <laughs> it's really just bad procrastination. <laughs> Well, that's awesome, man. So um, is your partner a member of Downtrider as well? No, no. He was in one of my old bands. We've been in three bands together, but now he's uh, focusing on his education and trying to start his career. So we met playing Fucking music. careers, man. Yeah, I'm, hey, I'm all for it. He's a smart guy, and he, um, he has some great ideas as far as how to... Uh, uh, you know, grow seaweed to either feed people or use as a fuel. Or uh, one of the things that he's really into is uh, using, uh, you know, clams and stuff like that to repopulating the clam population to clean up water, stuff like that. And it's all stuff that's really important to what's going on in our world. So I 100 percent totally support his education and him starting this career. And I'm very, very lucky that he 100 percent supports me in trying to do what I'm trying to do and doesn't necessarily expect me to be like, well, I'm going to go get my promotion <laughs> now. Like, cause that's, that's not happening. He knows that I'm more than happy with my day job as long as it pays X amount of dollars per hour. Right. Yeah. That's cool, man. Um, yes. Yeah, so w- one thing I did want to ask you is that you were saying you, some of my booker friends, do you have friends that book shows here in Philly? Because I really want to, what my I would love to interview a a talent booker or a talent buyer or a promoter or somebody like that. The, the reason is to say what is it that you're looking for, like how can bands approach you, and just to kind of get the message out for other bands, like 
this is the these are the do's and don'ts man you know yeah and yeah get that idea um as far as like smaller stuff goes yes definitely and i will be more than happy to give you names not on the mic because the last thing i want to do is say hey go to so-and-so they book shows and, and then, then for that person to get messages and messages right. and messages and messages and i don't want to do that i hear that and I, um, i'd appreciate it yeah if you if you if you know if absolutely. you know someone i'd love i would love to uh interview them uh, downtrotter people people want to to listen to you guys they want to find out more about you how do they do that uh, we have a Facebook uh, our name is downtrotter it's like downtrodden but with an R at the end so d-o-w-n-t-r-o-d-d-e-r or D is in David O is in owl W as in water T uh, I can't do the whole thing oh, fuck. yeah sorry I usually do the whole thing with animals which is pretty fun uh, but it's downtrotter with an R uh, we have a Facebook we also have a band camp uh, we have a Twitter that's at dr- Downtrotter PA, like Pennsylvania. Uh, and we have an Instagram. Um, so those are the definitely the best places to find us. Our first EP, that four-song EP we're talking about, is actually up for free download um, on our band camp. Or if you like, you can pay us for it and send a little note that says, hey, please donate this to the charity of your choice or give us a charity say hey you want say hey give my four dollars to morris home no problem we'll donate your four dollars to morris home wow yeah that's cool yeah that's a cool way to do it thanks man um uh oh one last thing so what i like to ask people here and if you don't have one that's fine but do you have any crazy ass philly stories crazy ass philly stories um no i mean not really i haven't really been living here that long um no i really i really really don't philly hasn't really been that crazy for me um but i do suggest everyone goes to jeff cold beer and gets a shot if you don't know what jeff cold beer is it's a bodega in south philly where apparently uh, they have a liquor license, or it's highly illegal. I don't know, but it's a bodega <laughs> slash bottle shop um, where you can go in and they'll sell you a shot of liquor if you drink it in the store, which is totally illegal as far as I know. But it's like almost uh, like a South Philly so legend at this point. Well, that's weird because I've seen those places like. Uh, I, so when I first came here, I was at Forty Fifth and Woodland, mm-hmm. and when I would go up further on Woodland, I would see that more than once um, really yeah man so uh, like bottle shops that'll let you do shots dude right there liquor? right there in the store i have never heard of that before yeah. i we found out about that because we played a show at pharmacy and uh in south philly which is a great spot and we you know walked to go get beers or something like that like uh, you know for my bandmates and i saw that and i was like i didn't think this was a thing i didn't think this was like legal whatsoever so uh, does it really matter at this point? This is Philly. It's I mean, s- South South Philly, there does not seem to be as many laws in South Philly like as in other areas. Not even lawless, but like like people parking in the middle of the street. When I first started going to South Philly and like playing shows in South Philly, I was like, this is so confusing. What time of day does it become acceptable to park in the middle of the street? Any fucking time. There's a, not a no parking sign there. That's what I've learned. That's apparently, what I've learned. Right? Apparently. I mean, I've parked in some spots in South Philly where I was like, I'm going to come back and my car is going to be gone. And I came back like two hours later and I was like, oh, my car's still here. <laughs> apparently they didn't want my 94 Camry that much. They were cool with that. So. Well, right on. Hey, it was a pleasure speaking with you, Kate. Thank yeah. you so much for your time. Um, yeah, make sure to check these guys out on Facebook, Instagram. We have a show, uh, the 22nd is going to be at Century. It is with uh, Sister Munch and uh, Dunn and Kruger, and it is going to be a great time. Uh, It will be over by 1030, so please get there on time. We look forward to seeing you out there. Awesome. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you. Thank you.